what is this show? My instant death ability is so overpowered, no one in the other world stands a chance against me is a very, very, very special series. I don't even know what the hell is happening. It's just all over the place. The character logic is just out the window. There might be explanations for why the characters act so stupid in this series, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's like I'm trapped between thinking that a lot of this stuff is being done out of parody or if a lot of it's trying to be serious, it's just the writer really sucks. I don't, it, it's one of those ones where you don't really know if this is intentional or if it just plain sucks. But yes, uh, I have watched the first four episodes of my instant death ability. Honestly, Katane is, is carrying it. I, I'm sorry, not Katane, uh, Donora. Donora, which is the female lead character which is, yes, voiced by the Seiyu that did Karane from 100 Girlfriends, and I am absolutely in love with her voice, but she's literally carrying the show for me. There's there's a couple aspects of the series that I'm really enjoying. It's weird, and I think it's good in a weird way, but let's just, let's just dive into the show. It opens up with Takato, who is a student in this one school. They are currently on a field trip, and they're in a bus together. At some point, Takato wakes up, and da 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 which is this one girl that's a classmate, she's screaming at him to wake up. And he finally wakes up to find pretty much a dead girl on the ground. Uh, everybody else is gone. And then one of the other students is impaled by a dragon's tail. He ends up taking a microphone, chucking at the tail of the dragon. It unimpales the person who's already dead. The dragon flies off. And then when it comes back towards them, Takaro says, die. And the dragon just dies. Now, we did get a brief kind of glimpse at the very beginning of the show where it shows an individual with the same kind of hairstyle, a young boy who is walking through this facility, kind of like Elfin Lead style. <laughs> Everybody's panicking, destruction's happening, and he literally tells this person who's taking somebody hostage to die and they fall over, and then he embraces the person that was being a hostage. But yeah, that's the assumption is that him and that he's had this ability to instantly kill things. But anyways, after like... Takado says, hey, Donara, Donara, I, 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 for some reason, can't not say her name. Donara, Donara, after he tells Donara to, like, chill, tell her what the story is, and so she fills him in on what happened. Yes, they were on this trip. At some point, they went through this, this tunnel. When they came out the other side of the tunnel, they were in another world. Immediately, once they were in this other world, this individual known as Xion shows up. And Xion says that she's a sage and that she wants to essentially have them all get stronger. She immediately kills, like, the teacher, and then immediately kills uh, the bus driver. Nobody's panicking while she's splattering them to nothingness. <laughs> Even, like I said, the, the earlier with Donana, and she wakes up Takado, and she's just, like, chilling with all these corpses laying around. These kids are, like, special in a way. None of these kids seem phased at all by death. <laughs> Every now and then, they try to be phased by death, but most of the time, they just don't seem like they care ab about death. Kids these days, right? Anyways, this this Xion, this, this sage, says, I'm gonna install something upon you. Everybody starts, well, most everybody glows, except for Takato, Donada, and, like, two other students. Everybody glows, and this install happens, which essentially gives them, like, special gifts, and they get this little screen that tells them stats and all this kind of stuff and their current quest. And then she gives them a quest, which is to kill a dragon. This dragon's going to show up within the next couple hours. You're going to kill it. And then she just leaves. Well, all the students at that point all kind of figure out what all each other's abilities are. Once they figure that out, they ditch all the people that are not with powers, like da 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 and they think Takato, and they immediately put a charm upon them one of the one of the students has the ability to increase aggro so she makes them more beautiful and attractive by essentially making the dragon come to them leaves them behind for death again Takato wakes up at that point kills the dragon and it's all settled following this eventually some students come back to see what happened with the dragon the dragon's already dead they're like wow that's weird and one of them apparently wanted Donara to die so they can turn her into a zombie and then do inappropriate things to her Takato immediately kills two of the students leaves one of them alive before sending him off to the forest to die, question mark. And at this point, they decide that they're going to travel to the royal capital where everybody apparently is supposed to go to. And during their travels, they kind of learn more about the world itself. Like I said, there's a lot of sages in this world. They pretty much rule the entire world. And again, people are brought to this world to essentially train to become sages. And if they fail, they'll become livestock. Well, this is all in an effort, question mark, in order to fight off visitors, which are other beings that come from other worlds. Like later on, we run, run into one that's like a full mecha suit, and he's apparently a visitor. They also have this big, massive, shadowy darkness that's like walking around, turning everything into sand. That's apparently a visitor. 
And all the while, this Xion, this sage, is just chilling up in her mansion, you know, watching as the kids are dying and trying to figure out what happens. And supposedly being a little bit cautious over the idea of somebody awakening to an ability called instant death, which, yes, Takado seemed to have. Eventually, Takado and Donora end up running into one of the students who is Tachibana, and Tachibana was told by another student to essentially break off from the group because all of them are training in a forest. They told him to break off from the group because his ability specifically is designed to take control over lower ranking people, and he's able to gain all the experience from all what all they do. So the idea is him to go around, beat up individuals, you know, take control of them and then send them out to fight more stuff. That way he keeps getting experience and he's like leveling up really quickly. Well, eventually he sees <laughs> Takuto and Donara and his girls in his little harem are jealous of Donara. He wants Donara. And so eventually as he's attacking Takuto, Takuto uses his ability to see through the ones that he's controlling to be able to get to him who's like way in a ruin somewhere else and kill him. <laughs> His ability is just massively OP. Eventually, this vampire lane is going to kill this darkness cloud that's going around and eventually catches the interest of Takato and has her men turn the entire city into zombies just to flush him out, at which point he pretty much just kills everybody with his instant kill ability. And that's pretty much where we leave the show off. Just <laughs> essentially Takato traveling around with Donara and constantly killing everybody. Uh, eventually, Donara, we find out that she has like this guardian spirit thing that is following her around and is giving her special abilities like a katana and just trying to keep her safe. And it is extremely annoying. <laughs> There's hints towards the later parts of the fourth episode that some of the students have been trying to track Takuto, like possibly even before they came to this world. So maybe people understand what Takato is. Maybe they're just all observing him in some way. So even in this world, they're like trying to reestablish tracking devices and to find out where he's at. Like one particular student who's like a samurai ability, she's got like this app on her phone that says the first door is open, which kind of ties into what happened initially when Takato first came there, when he first used his death ability this door opened up. So maybe this idea that they were tracking him to make sure his abilities don't awaken and that door opening indicates that now he's able to kill things. Which again, all kind of ties back into the very first shot that we got of him where he was walking through this facility and instantly killed somebody. So my thoughts on this absolute train wreck of a show. Um, for, let, let's get the visuals out of the way first. It's not a bad looking show. Like very early on, like the first... The first few shots of them first in the other world when he first killed the first dragon, first, 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 it just, it didn't look good. And for the most part, the rest of the show is not great, but it's not horrible looking. So visually it's fine. There's like this weird oddity about lips, or at least maybe with just Donara, because I never noticed it with anybody else, where whenever their mouth is closed, they just like, there's a line for the mouth, but then there's like an empty spot right there and there's just a dot. And it's just like, the moment I noticed that, I can't not see it and it drives me crazy. Uh, very interesting character design choices. But other than that, like I said, it, visually it looks fine. It's not, it's not, you know, breaking grounds or anything like that. It just, mostly it's just action stills and decent looking animation. But the show itself, let's, let's just get into this. I don't know. <laughs> I seriously don't know what I think of this show. First of all, from the get go, it was a schlog to get through. Mainly because I hated the character logic in the show. The character logic in this show absolutely frustrated me. It, it's kind of in the ground, the same grounds as things like uh, the death game type of shows where suddenly everybody just becomes psychopaths. Like they're able to cross that line to becoming killers without even thinking. Like with the, the opening segment, like I said, they're watching the student, the teachers getting blown away and they're not, they're, they're panicking a little bit. But they're not like screaming and they're not panicking. They, you immediately think that the moment one of them's dead, they'd be panicking, climbing out of the windows. But no, they're just sitting there like, oh, I guess teacher got splatted. And again, it could be explained the idea if these individuals are possibly monitoring Takato and they're possibly not just students. I don't know, question mark. But even still, like I said, with the whole segment after that, and Donara is not even faced by the fact that there is a student behind her impaled and dying or, or possibly dead. Another student on the ground, bloody dead, and she's just chill. And like he's like, oh yeah, whatever. I'm just using my my console here. And she's like, oh, that, that's fine. Okay, I'm calm down. Let's talk about what happened. And there's just like no urgency and no panic happening. And additionally, when she gets into the story about the students themselves, again splatted, no reaction. And then immediately everybody leaves them to die. I mean, not even not even like a somebody going. Wait, we can't do that. 
they're all just like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Peace out, people. You be the bait. I understand that like in the heat of the moment when disaster happens, it's, it's sometimes fight or flight. In a lot of cases, it is flight. But these people have like a broad time to really think about this and there's not like any dilemma happening and it just feels weird and then have the other three students come back and they're like whatever we're gonna just blast you they do technically say we've been in this other way <laughs> again the, the show is all over the place the three students that come back after Takado kills the first dragon they claim that they're used to this because they were once in this world before. They said that they were, all three of them were transported to this world. They defeated the demon lord, and then they were transported back into the original world. And apparently now they're back in this world again through this bus transportation. So they've been apparently heroes in the past. Um, but two of them are dead now because Takato kills them. <laughs> this show's all over the place. I don't understand what the hell's going on. It, it, it's, it's, it's implying that a lot of people and a lot of visitors are all coming to this world on a regular basis. This Xion person brought the, this bus to this world. They've had, again, these three other students were in this world before to defeat the Demon Lord. They have this robot visitor that's come to this world, this shadow darkness coming in. They have vampires. There's, it's all over the place, and I'm assuming that pretty much everybody in this world is probably an isekai, or at least most of the people, anybody with powers in this world, I'm going to assume at this point is an isekai. Just what world is the question mark? Because obviously this robot is not from our world. It was from some other world. And it's all kind of this mishmash of them all coming together just to have Takado delete them all. Because that seems to be the the ongoing shtick is just Takado walking up to people and, and saying, should I, okay, I, I guess I will die. There is like a moral conundrum that they kind of bring up every now and then, despite the fact that there seems to be no regard to life in this entire story, is every now and then Donora will say, no, Takara, you can't kill them. And then he's like, oh, so I can't kill this one? Well, we need to establish... <laughs> like, at some point, he literally says, we hate we need to establish a line because I need to know what I can and cannot kill. Which is kind of funny in the idea that Takato seems to be wanting to create a moral baseline with Donara because he doesn't want to be a, like a mass killer. And at the same time, Donara is like understanding of that, like, oh yeah, that's right. We should probably establish something because half the time she's knee-jerk reaction to kill them. Half the time he's knee-jerk reaction and they keep, <laughs> they keep pushing and pulling to each other, which one they're going to kill or not. Um, it, it's, it's weird in that regard and how they handle that. And sometimes it's to comedic relief in the idea of like this guy that's created like this mass army of zombies who's now going to transform and kill Takoro. And he literally, <laughs> as this zombie monster guy is transforming into this bat dragon thing, Takoro kills him like mid transformation. And Donoro is like, you can't just kill him mid transformation. He's like, why? <laughs> Like, oh, I'm supposed to wait until he's fully transformed before I do this because it's too anticlimactic or something. It's, this show's a mess. I don't know. I, I really don't know what to think of this show. I, I guess the only, like, curiosity I have is what is going on with the students that have been transported with Takoto? Because, again, they're, they're implying that these, these students may know who he is and what he's able to do. Like, everybody identifies Takoto and Danara as not having gifts, they don't have abilities. They they weren't installed when they first came there. Sion said, well, some of you don't have the capability. You're as good as livestock. And she just leaves. And so it's implying that Takato and Donora didn't have the potential to becoming sages. But at we at least know that Takato is a lab experiment with the ability to instantly kill people. That seems to be the implication there. And everybody else had just got dragged along with it that may be observing him and their able to be sages, which makes you beg the question of why did they leave Takato unless they just knew that he was going to survive anyways. But why wouldn't they vocalize that? I mean, are they all supposed to keep it a secret? Are only some of them keeping track of him? <laughs> Again, this show makes no sense. It's just all over the place. Um, and I think that's probably my biggest criticism that I have for the show so far is it just doesn't feel like it's... Nothing feels cohesive except for Takato and Donora's journey. Like, yes, we, we, we're getting an, a, a, a path for them. They enter the place... They're traveling, they're taking down bad guys, they're taking down bad students, and they're looking for the royal capital so they can possibly go back home, question mark? I don't know. It's just everything around them is so all over the place. This vampire that at some point was trying to figure out how this guy's eyeballs got instant killed by Takato and how to possibly remedy it. And then she's actually trying to figure out how to die. So she's interested in Takato because he can technically kill her. But then when he kills her, she made a clone so that she can keep living. Okay, you have Sion, who is, again, the sage that brought them all there. And she's just chilling in her bed, looking at this, this chart showing each one of the students die and going, huh, I guess they're dying. 
Uh, that's weird. Hope they become sages. <laughs> you have these other students that are all breaking off from the group to train or do their own training. You have, again, medieval times areas. Then you have areas that are like uh, like metropolises that are like skyscrapers and everything with massive hotels. And I don't know. And then you suddenly out of nowhere, this lady shows up that becomes the assistant to Takato. Like, Donora wakes up in the morning from the hotel, comes downstairs, and Takato is talking to an assistant who's, like, literally managing all of his money and assets and, and getting him tickets to get on a train. And it's like, where did this lady come from? <laughs> like, this kind of sort of just randomly shows up, and she's apparently magical in some way and storing all of his stuff. It's weird. This whole show is just an absolute mess that I don't understand whatsoever. <laughs> and I guess that's kind of why I like it. Like, I hate the character logic. The character ro logic writing is all stupid. But again, it kind of makes me believe that I think the writer is going for parody. I think they're going for possibly isekai parody. But I can't make heads or tails of anything to get a sense of what the hell is going on. Like I said, the only thing that I'm really enjoying right now is Takato and Donora's chemistry. They're literally the only thing carrying the show for me. And yes, partly because... Donada is voiced by the Seiyu that does Kanane from 100 Girlfriends. She just has a voice. This Seiyu has a voice of pure, like, absurdity. Like, when something absurd happens, she is yelling about it. And I just, I think, I, I get a kick out of it. Her voice just nails frustration and absurdity that I just love. Like, just the end of episode four, having her, like, literally her katana, I think, was disguised as her underwear and that's how it got brought there and so the moment the katana is manifested her underwear disappears i'm guessing <laughs> and she's literally yelling at this stupid spirit of her family for like literally creating sci-fi weaponry out of nowhere it, it's weird i think the only thing overall that i just cannot stand is the spirit for donara like the, her family spirit is super obnoxious her voice is it grains my ears and i cannot stand it but i don't know in the end, we'll see where this show goes. I, 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 I'm probably going to keep watching it. I think it's an absolute train wreck, and I don't know if anything of value is going to come out of it in the end. That's the problem that I have. I can see the value of the absurdity and the parody of Isekai's. This, like, let's just throw everything into the pot and see what cooks. That kind of concept of the Isekai genre. But I don't know that it's going to do anything that's going to be at all value in the end besides just Takato uh, deleting a bunch of people that are all uh, just absolutely disgusting human beings. And I don't know why they're even there. I, and half the time, I can't. I don't even know if the students are from their class or people that are already there. Because there's a lot of kids that are showing up that are sages that I don't know if they're students from the bus or if they're just other isekais that are in the world. I know that Tachibana was supposed to be one, and I, th I think the camp was supposed to be one, but I don't know what all these other students that are popping up. I think they're all, like, just randos, but... I don't know if you got anything out of this video. I hope you got something out of this video, other than the fact that I am completely and utterly confused, and I don't know. But, uh, yeah, if you're looking for a show where OP character goes around and says, uh, Shine, and people just fall over, check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below, comment, let me know what you think of the series so far, if you're going to be checking it out. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, and let, let me know if you're only watching it for Donada as well. Like, her Seiyu is great. Uh, uh, Kanane fans out there, is, is there any Kanane fans out there that are just watching the show just for her? <laughs> Anyways, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content. I need to review first impressions, top list, if it's animated, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips link, super thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate everybody does, and y'all take care.